Uh, hello, everyone. I hope I'm coming through OK. If anyone has difficulty hearing me, uh, please give the office a call. Since if I can't hear you, you're not going to be able to talk to me. You can call the office at area code 352-588-0477. But I hope I'm coming through. Also, if uh, you do have a question, uh, those of you that are joining me for the first time, there's two ways of uh, asking a question. One is to raise your hand. Uh, there are um, a little hand button that you can push and I'll see your hand is raised just like in a classroom. Also, you can type a question. Uh, today, we have a very interesting webinar. This has been a subject of great interest of mine. Who exactly uh, was Dr. Bates? And was Dr. Bates full of crap? Or was he a visionary ophthalmologist who was very far ahead of his time? Well, Dr. Bates practiced in New York City from 1860 to 1931. And he had the interesting insight that he attributed nearly all sight problems to strain of the eyes. And if you could reduce the strain, eliminate the strain, you would cure your eye disease. And of course, he wasn't so far off because people do realize now that stress is a component of all disease. And by reducing stress, we can improve our health and improve our vision. He also felt, he, he took the stance and he felt that glasses were harmful and never necessary, never. And I have to underline that. And his famous statement was, the angels in heaven weep every time a child is prescribed glasses. And Dr. Bates felt that typically school-age children need glasses because they're in a classroom, an unnatural setting. There's a lot of stress in their eyes that uh, they don't have the freedom to use their eyes properly. And that is when vision problems develop. And of course, most school children do develop the need for glasses right around fourth or fifth grade. And that is right around the time I developed the need for glasses. Um, you know, the stress of school being in a regimented environment and not using your eyes properly. So we'll talk about all those things. He wrote a book called The Bates Method for Better Eyesight Without Glasses. And this was a big selling uh, book. And you can see a picture of Dr. Bates there with uh, a patient. He was using an instrument to measure refractive problems, and he discovered that these refractive problems are dynamic. That when there's stress in the eye, the refraction changes when there's relaxation in the eye. So he felt the need for glasses was due to stress, and if you could reduce your stress, glasses would be eliminated. Now, I was taught in my ophthalmology residency that Bates was a crazy man, and his work had been dis disproven many, many times by traditional ophthalmologists. But as we know, with traditional Western medicine, what is disproven today will be proven fact tomorrow. And you can look at that throughout the history of medicine when Dr. Lin felt that vitamin C prevented scurvy. He was mocked when Dr. Semmelweis felt that hand washing reduced infection. He was mocked uh, when Pasteur developed the rabies vaccine. He was mocked. It was craziness. So I think one key factor in being a good physician is to keep an open mind. And of course, I was heavily influenced during my ophthalmology training that Bates was crazy, and uh, that's what I was taught. But there's several people who changed my mind. Um, I met a, uh, a man named Mayer Schneider, uh, who's a massa massage therapist and who's a practitioner of the Bates method. And Mayer was born blind with congenital cataracts and glaucoma, and he was told he could never see again. And he began the Bates exercises, the Bates therapy as a young child, persisted with them. 
and he eventually got his California driver's license. And I've, I've met Mayer several times. He's written some great books and he gives uh, vision um, exercises and training to people who want to improve their vision in a more natural way. I also met a, a man, um, Tom Quackenbush, who's also a Bates practitioner. And Tom had extremely thick myopic glasses. He felt that he could eliminate his need for glasses and he began using the Bates methods um, and he improved his vision. So he no longer needed any glasses. Uh, before I talk about Algis Huxley, there's another individual, uh, Dr. Jacob Lieberman, who also had an extremely thick pair of glasses. And the interesting uh, aspect with uh, Dr. Lieberman, he did some of the Bates exercises and meditation and becoming more aware of his vision and his surroundings. And he also completely eliminated his glasses and he was shocked at how clear his vision was without glasses. But when he went back to his eye doctor to be measured for his glasses, his eye doctor and Dr. Lieberman expected the eye doctor to tell him that, oh man, this is amazing. You don't need any glasses. His eye doctor said, there's no change in your glasses. <laughs> Can you believe that? So in other words, uh, are glasses really necessary? Uh, if Dr. Lieberman had perfect vision without his glasses and the eye doctor measured, no change. So this is something just to ponder and question. Now, Algis Huxley, famous science fiction writer, he wrote, wrote The Brave New World, Doors of Perception. He was kind of a favorite author of mine when I was growing up. Um, I wasn't aware, but he wrote a book called The Art of Seeing. Huxley had horrible eyesight. He had to read with Braille most of his life. Traditional ophthalmology couldn't help him. So when he began investigating uh, the work of Dr. Bates and tried some of his therapies, he improved his vision so he could function uh, without Braille and without his glasses. So these are people that have changed my mind. And here's my friend, uh, Mayor Schneider on the left. His website is www.self-healing.org. Um, we also um, work together to produce the item on the bottom right called the Eye Rescue Kit. And uh, this is a combination of vitamins, nutrients, and a tape of uh, Mayer giving us some exercises. So. Um, this is one of the individuals who helped change my mind. Tom Quackenbush wrote his web address is www.naturalvisioncenter.com. Tom and I have given workshops over the years. He's currently living in Denmark. He wrote a book, Relearning to See, and a book called Better Eyesight. And both of these are a compilation of the works of uh, Dr. William Bates. And here is the book, The Art of Seeing a 1942 book by Algis Huxley. And this book is um, dedicated to Dr. Bates. And Huxley believed Bates, it was solely that Bates helped improve his eyesight when traditional ophthalmology let him down. So all of these things changed my mind about um, Bates. Now, those of you that have gone through the program and most of you on this coaching call uh, do know microcurrent light therapy and stress reduction. These are a big part of my program and this is the reason why the program is so successful. So uh, all of these microcurrent light therapy, stress reduction are part of what Dr. Bates taught uh, in the early 1900s. The three techniques of Bates and I'll talk about each one of these. The first is called palming, the second sunning, and the third is swinging. Now the palming, the purpose of this technique is to provide total rest for the eyes. Um, and as Bates mentioned, that stress uh, is a cause of all eye disease. So if you could reduce stress in your eyes, you would improve your eye problem. So um, 
when you do begin to do palming, you'll be able to feel a reduction in that eye strain. People with impaired sight strain their eyes and attempt to see better. So when you have impaired sight, you strain your eyes. You know, you want to see better, and that's actually counterproductive. You want to relax your eyes. There's something called um, staring. You know, when you have macular degeneration or glaucoma and you're trying to read something, you strain even more. And that, unfortunately, makes your vision worse. So it's the, this whole idea of just relaxing your eyes, absorbing the vision, using more of your peripheral vision. So palming allows you to develop this more relaxed uh, sense. And here's an example. Uh, and you put the palm, the center part of your palm, over your closed eyes. And some people recommend that you rub your hands together to increase the warmth. And also when you rub your hands together, you develop an electrostatic charge. So the mic or the uh, palming is in a way kind of like a microcurrent therapy. You're direct, directing electrical energy into your eyes. Now, uh, curly in photography, uh, you can see the photograph there, does show that there is electromagnetic energy that emanates from our hands. So this is a way of doing a type of microcurrent therapy when you're using the electrical energy of your hands directing it into your body. There's a great book called The Body Electric by Robert Becker, and he describes in detail different scientific studies that have been done to show that the body is electra, electric, and that disease is a lack of electrons. So you want to put more electrons into your body, and that's one of the reasons why microcurrent works. You're putting electrons into your diseased eye, and of course you can do that yourself palming. So palming is a great exercise to do. Uh, most of you are doing the microcurrent once a day, but um, in between, a couple times a day when your eyes feel tired, when you do feel some strain, or you feel your vision is slacking, rub, rub your hands together, get in a comfortable position, and maybe 10 minutes, uh, do some palming. Also take some deep breaths um, to help relax the autonomic nervous system, keep the eyes gently closed, don't squeeze them. Dr. Bates felt that if you could perceive black, then your eyes would be totally relaxed. Most people, when they close their eyes, they see flashes of light, movement, sparkles, and things like that. So relax your eyes, deep breathing, and do palming a couple times a day. Now, in his book, Dr. Bates talked about sunning. Now, um, I was totally unacceptable of sunning. I thought it was dangerous. And, and this is a picture here that Dr. Bates actually used a magnifying lens to direct the energy of the sun into the eye. Uh, I don't recommend you do this. This is kind of scary. Uh, I do know a couple of eye doctors with macular degeneration who have attempted to do this through a closed eyelid it is a way of concentrating the energy of the sun, but I think I'm going to give you a much safer way of doing sunning. So sunning is done, of course, on a sunny day, and I recommend that you do it early in the morning or late at night when the sun is on the horizon. There's a couple reasons for that. Number one, it's at a good angle, so you don't have to arch your head back. And the second reason is when the sun is on the horizon, it emanates a red infrared spectrum of light. And I'm going to talk more about the red near infrared spectrum because there have been some studies um, done to show that this particular wavelength can be beneficial for eye problems. Bates stated that sunning helps rebuild the retina while improves your psychological and emotional state. Um, so keep this in mind. This is in the early 1900s, he said it rebuilt the retina. Um, it also accustoms the eye to light and reduces photosensitivity. And there have been studies to show that it does strengthen the eye and it does help reduce photosensitivity. So, and this is some of the research. Environmental damage to the retina 
preconditioning. So this study preconditioned the retina with bright light and then the animals were subject to hyperoxic stress. The animals that had the light exposure, the bright light exposure had less damage to the retina. So this indicated that sunning does protect the eyes from stress. The second article is photo biomodulation for the treatment of retinal injury. And they looked at using uh, bright light, laser light to help regenerate the eye after retinal injuries. And it was also favorable. A low level laser therapy improves vision in patients with age related macular degeneration. This was a study done in Berlin. Um, there was also the same authors looked at using low level laser irradiation for the early diagnosis and also for the treatment of glaucoma. So both of these articles, all four of these articles indicate, believe it or not, that Bates was right with sunning. Now, when I first um, read the article, the study in Berlin, I bought the laser that they used in that study. And this is a Thor laser. It uses red near infrared light from 750 to 850 nanometers. And uh, this is a rather expensive device. So we paid close to $20,000 for this. And when my wife and I began to do some of the treatments, my wife made the comment, she said, honey, this is just like looking at the sun. And I said, my goodness, Bates was right. Um, you know, because this is using a red near infrared light. And um, when you're looking at the sun early in the morning or late in the day when it's on the horizon, it gives off this similar red near infrared light spectrum, the same nanometers that are in the Thor laser. Now the red infrared light, uh, and there are scientific uh, research articles to show this, increases ATP. Now what is ATP? ATP is the gasoline of the cell. If we can eat, improve ATP, we're improving cellular function. I also learned that the red infrared light stimulates lymph. Well, what is lymph good for? Well, lymph circulates in the body. It helps to detoxify the body. It is kind of like an immune modulator, it helps strengthen the immune system, and it helps the body to heal. There are lymphatic channels throughout the body. And in particular, it helps remove the waste. And in glaucoma, if we can reduce or improve the lymph flow to the eye, we can lower the pressure. Also, one thing that I was not aware of, that the red infrared light stimulate stem cells. So my goodness, this is a way for us to stimulate our own stem, stem cells in the body to improve um, the healing. Um, now, I don't want you to abandon microcurrent for the red infrared laser because microcurrent has been demonstrated to do these three things also. Increase ATP, stimulate lymph and also stimulate stem cells. But the red infrared light may be a unique approach and it may have a different physiological effect. This is an example of a patient doing the laser light on the eye. Um, you close the eyelid. Uh, this is not done through an open eyelid and roughly it's uh, 10 to 30 seconds. It's a very brief treatment, 10 to 30 seconds and um, it's also done at a certain pulse. The studies have shown that a 10 frequency, a 10 hertz frequency, meaning 10 flashes per second, seem to give the greatest effect. Then what we do is we stimulate both eyes, then we also stimulate the neck. Um, this is where the lymphatic flow goes to the eye in the brain. So this is where stimulating the lymph flow to help detoxify the head and the brain and the eye. And the third area, this is the shin bone. Uh, the long bones of the body uh, do produce stem cells. And in order for the laser to be effective, you have to go near the surface of the bone. And the shin bone 
is where the bone is the closest to the skin. So we also do the very same treatment, 30 seconds, uh, 10 hertz or 10 frequency uh, vibration, 10 pulses per second. And so we're beginning to use this as part of our treatment protocol. Now, I have investigated. I, I think that the Thor laser is just too costly for most patients. I have come across a Delta laser. It's portable, compact, lightweight. It has a very good power source up to 8.5 hours. And it's just a nice uh, portable in instrument that not only delivers the red light, but it also has a separate infrared channel. So you're deli delivering red light and infrared. And this is uh, the unit right here. And we got a very good price. I think typically these machines sell for over $2,000. And the entire unit with a carrying case, traveling case, is $1,759. So if you are interested in adding this modality, um, uh, give uh, someone in the office a call and they can talk to you about it. Uh, or uh, the next time you're in the office, you can, you can give it a try. But I do think this is something that adds a whole new dimension to um, uh, improving your health and improving your vision because this particular laser can be used to stimulate the lymphatic system, stem cells, and your eye, all three in, um, in one unit. Now, we know that syntonic light therapy is different than laser because it uses non-coherent light. Now, what is the difference between non-coherent and coherent? Well, coherent is laser light, where all the light beams are aligned in an orderly fashion to give a greater penetration. Non-coherent is the light is scattered, the light that comes from a light bulb. And cytonic light therapy uses different shades of green and blue and red to um, help balance the autonomic nervous system uh, stimulate ATP production and help stimulate the lymph flow and stem cells. Now, the question that all of you might have, is there a difference between coherent and non-coherent light? Now, this may come as a shock because everybody thinks that the laser is more powerful, that it's brighter, uh, it's coherent. So a Russian researcher, Dr. Tina Karu, has investigated this and has concluded that there is no difference between the two. The only difference is that the laser has greater tissue penetration. So that means that when you're stimulating the lymph or when you're stimulating stem cells, a laser light is much more effective because it penetrates through the skin and into the bone or into the lymphatic system, where the syntonic light therapy only penetrates into the eye. So the syntonic light therapy does uh, penetrate into the eye through the retina, the choroid. It does penetrate the blood system. So the blood does circulate. But the coherent laser light may have a greater physiological effect when you're treating the lymph and stem cells. But I still believe that there is some lymphatic stimulation and some stem cell st stimulation whenever you're doing the syntonic light therapy, whenever you're looking at that um, frosted halogen bulb sitting five feet away with your glasses. So don't underestimate the power of your syntonic light therapy. So here again is one of the best ways to do the red infrared laser. Uh, God has given us this natural light source so those of you that live in a sunny environment where you can see the sunset, and of course, of course, here in Florida on the Gulf Coast, we always have beautiful sunsets, which are perfect for doing Dr. Bates's technique called sunning. So it's hard to believe that light therapy in the form of sunning, sunning was advocated by Dr. Bates over a hundred years ago, and his technique might be a key to the prevention and treatment of macular degeneration, glaucoma, and other diseases. So 
Dr. Bates was right on with his treatment of Sonny. Now vision is more than acuity. Um, I always like to look at function. It doesn't matter how small a letter you can read on the eye chart. You need to be able to take that acuity and use it to function in your life, reading activity and enjoying things. So everybody always wants to know what is my level of vision. 2200 is the big E. 2020 is this line eight right here. I have patients who can only see the big E, but yet they don't have any problems. They're able to function, cook, uh, do daily activities. And then I have patients that are able to see the 2020 line down here. Uh, they can read those letters, but they have trouble functioning. So there's something more than um, our vision than just reading the acuity. So Dr. Bates, developed this technique called the long swing. And this is where you turn your body back and forth and you hold an object in the center. And the way this is done is it helps you to become aware of your environment. Um, it helps you coordinate your central vision and more peripheral vision. And of course, it may be difficult for me to explain this technique um, in or during this webinar, but if you get Huxley's book, and also I have a chapter in my book, The Ten Essentials to Save Your Sight on this, which might make a little bit more sense. So simply what you do is you turn yourself back and forth, side to side, as you're looking at an object with outstretched hands in front of you. And you notice as you move to the right, looking at the object, everything in your environment moves to the left. And as you move that object to the left, everything in your environment moves to the right. So you're coordinating your central fixation and your peripheral, you're stimulating the function of your eye because most of us have ignored our peripheral vision. Our life is spent on a computer, texting, reading, and we're not using our peripheral vision. An eye is truly balanced whenever we're using our central and peripheral vision equally. So the long swing is one way of doing it, but dancing, yoga, Tai Chi, and sports, all of these are functions that help improve our peripheral and central vision. Uh, of course, when you're dancing, you want to keep an eye on your partner, that's the central vision, but your peripheral vision is you want to keep an eye on a dance floor so you don't bump into anybody. And of course, yoga has different breathing and postures. And the only way to maintain these postures is to be aware of your position in space. Tai Chi is a great exercise for uh, being aware of your position in space. And of course, all sports, you have to be aware. So this idea, if you really want to improve your vision, you have to work on improving your central and your peripheral vision. Now, um, uh, Dr. Jacob Lieberman developed this wonderful instrument called an eye port. Unfortunately, it is no longer in, uh, it's no longer being manufactured. He had problems with the company. He is looking for a manufacturer. It's rather unfortunate. So if you do have an eye port, you're able to get it online. Uh, this is a great device. I'm not gonna go into detail about this, but this was something I recommended for everyone. It was used to be part of our program. Unfortunately, I hope that it's going to be back in production. Okay, well, I want to uh, thank everybody for your attention. And I hope this um, did come through. If you do have any questions, um, I'm just checking the question box. Please uh, either type me a question or, or raise your hand. So any questions out there? Also, um, oh, we have somebody has a question. Uh, Nancy, uh, you have a question? Yes, I want to know, is it safe to use the laser and the microcurrent the same day? Or yes, is it definitely. Or do them every other day? Uh, definitely. It's safe to use because they have a slightly different uh, physiological action. So it is safe to use both the same day. But I want to caution you with the laser. 
you don't need to do it for a long period of time. The right. Berlin study, all they did were two treatments a day for 30 seconds. Right. So you don't need a lot of time. So I right. would let your body kind of be a feedback mechanism. Just do, you do it for 30 seconds or so, and then see how your vision is. And then you may want to increase up to a minute, but I'd be very cautious to do it longer than that. The instructions I had were six to eight breaths, which is in and out. So that probably is about 20 or 25 seconds, maybe. Yeah, you want to breathe really slow. So it's six very slow, six to eight slow breaths. Right. Right. I was told, you know, to be careful, too. So that's good. And you don't really need to have a bright laser light. And that's why I like the Delta laser. The Delta laser that I discovered has um, a very nice relaxing light source and it also has an infrared source that you can use to stimulate not only the eye uh, but the lymphatics, uh, stem cells, and it's also an instrument to treat uh, musculoskeletal uh, problems too, injuries and bruises. So at this point, I think that the cold laser is a supplement to the microcurrent. I don't think there's been any studies to show that it's better. The only thing that intrigues me about the laser is that it, there seems to be a, a greater stimulation of the stem cells and the lymphatics with the laser. But of course, the microcurrent does that too. We're stimulating the lymph and we're stimulating stem cells with the microcurrent. I found it beneficial to have both. You know, they do seem to be a little different, but they I felt like they complement each other. Okay, good. Well, that's the kind of feedback I need um, because, you know, you folks are in the trenches. You're trying to do everything to improve your eyesight, so thanks for that feedback. But as I get more and more feedback from patients, then uh, that will probably develop into, you know, our long-term program. But right now, the long-term program is the Syntonic Light because it's less expensive and uh, the microcurrent. But those of you that may have some extra healthcare dollars and you're looking to buy another gadget, uh, I, I would recommend the cold laser. Uh, and I think that the Delta cold laser is one of the best on the market for the price. Because, uh, you know, you can spend uh, up to $10,000. That's what we did for our Thor laser, which is a more professional unit. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Nancy. Um, any other questions? Oh, Chili has uh, some questions here. Palming. If you do not always see black when the palms of the hands are the eyes, should you palm in a darker or dark room? Yep, I think that Dr. Bates felt that it should be a dimly lit room. And even if you're in a totally dark room, midnight in a coal mine, uh, you're going to still see flashes of light. That's because your eye has stress in it. So you don't want to cause a lot of stress by making, trying to make everything black. Dr. Bates felt that you just want to relax, do the palming. If you're seeing gray or flashes, just keep the eyes closed. And of course, many times if you're at work or in a computer, you may not have the luxury of a dark room. So you can palm um, in any uh, environment and still get an effect. Um, if you're watching the sunset, you still close the eyes while facing the sun. Absolutely. Do not open your eyes um, because you could get an overexposure of ultraviolet light. Remember, the ultraviolet light penetrates through your closed eyelids. When you're looking at the setting sun, you can see a bright illumination. And of course, that is the bright illumination that's hitting your retina. Okay, any other questions? I guess that that is it. So I'm going to make a copy of this uh, webinar for those of you that did not attend or if you missed something, you want to listen to it again. And I want to thank all of you uh, for participating. And there have been, there was a request for next month that I talk about cataracts, all the methods that are available to help reduce uh, 
and prevent cataracts from growing. So I want to thank everybody for joining me, and I look forward to next month's webinar. Thanks, everyone, and have, have a good week.